Frames are the backbone of every layout created in Adobe InDesign, giving structure to your text, images and ideas, and transmit a blank canvas into a masterpiece. As soon as we set up a document in InDesign, the next step is to start bringing in our visual elements. In InDesign, frames are the fundamental structures that contain all the visual elements in a document. Frames are the essential building blocks that help you manage everything in your work area. And if you're new to InDesign, there is a lot to learn about them. So let's jump in and see how frames work in InDesign. So as I scroll through this booklet document and click around, we can see that most of the elements are set in frames. If I press W on the keyboard, I can toggle into normal mode where we can see the framework of the document with all the frame bounding boxes. In this instance, some frames have hard corners and some have round corners. Some contain text, some contain images, and some simply include color. This is a simple paradigm that allows us to control all elements on the page and build structure to bring our layout to life. Now, as simple a topic as this may seem, there is a lot to know about frames to enable you to harness your creativity. So let's jump into a document, get hands-on with InDesign, and start creating frames. To demonstrate frames, I recommend opening up this frames worksheet. This document can be found in the downloadable folder that comes with this course. This download folder comes with multiple projects and a ton of assets and resources we will be using in this course. You can find the link to acquire the folder from the description. With the download folder open, click into folder two, practice files, and open the practice worksheets in design file. If we scroll down to page two, we can see a variety of worksheets. For this video, we are going to look at the frames worksheet. So with the selection tool, I'll select the working with frames thumbnail. Now I'll either come to the links panel and click edit original, or I'll hold alt on the keyboard and double click on the worksheet thumbnail, and the worksheet will open up in its own document. In this practice session, you'll learn how to create and manipulate different types of frames, giving you the skills to build professional and visually appealing layouts. So here in this worksheet, you can see what we are going to cover. Below, we have a sample document, which we will be referring back to shortly. And if we come to the second spread, we can see what we are going to be focusing on in this video. So in Adobe InDesign, there are four main types of frames to be aware of. Unassigned frames, text frames, graphic frames, and vector frames. So the first is the unassigned frame. When you create a frame using the frame tool, by default, it starts as an unassigned frame. These are simply empty frames that hold no content inside. If we press W on the keyboard, we can toggle into normal mode and we can see the outline of the first frame. We can see the outline of the frame, but until something is put inside it, it is simply an empty vessel waiting to be assigned. So back up to the first spread. With the selection tool, I'll click the thumbnail for the sample doc and I'll either come to the links panel and click edit original, or I'll hold alt on the keyboard and double click on the worksheet thumbnail and the document will open up in its own tab. Now for this document, I'm using the font Minel and Montserrat. If you have not already downloaded all the fonts for this course, this is a free font that you can acquire online. To get this font, I recommend you check out the course fonts page on the course PDF document. This is a list of all the fonts that are used in this class and where to get them. Simply click on the Minel and Montserrat link and this will take you straight to where you can download it. Simply close this document, install the font, open it back up again, and you should be able to follow along just fine. So next we have the text frame. Text frames are specifically designed to hold and format text, allowing for easy manipulation of typography, flow, and alignment. Here in this document, you can see there are a lot of text frames, some with large, simple text, and some with more text-heavy paragraphs. Next we have graphic frames. These are frames that have a simple color fill or contain links, offering options for fitting, scaling, and positioning within the layout. Here in this document, you can see there are a lot of image frames. On the front, we have a nice large image. On the back, we have a bunch of succulent images all in their individual frames positioned freely. And on the inside spread, we have more images positioned freely on the spread. Last, we have vector frames. Now, unlike the previous frames that are normally created using the frame tool, Vector frames are created by either drawing using the pen tools or by pasting in shapes from apps like Illustrator. These frames are commonly used to create graphic shapes, icons or textures in a document. However, when a vector image is pasted into InDesign, InDesign recognizes the anchor points which enable them to behave just like frames, becoming a container which can contain text and image. 
In my sample document on page three, up in the top left, I have a vector graphic that has been pasted in from Illustrator. Currently, the vector object is filled with color, but if selected with the direct selection tool, we can see the anchor points. More on this later. Now, mastering the selection tool in InDesign is key to effectively control and manipulate frames within your layout. The selection tool, the black arrow, allows you to select frames. When you select a frame, you will see a bounding box, which gives us the ability to take action. We can simply click and drag to move them around. We can click and drag on any of the handles, change the shape and size of a frame, or we can place our mouse over the end and click to rotate. The selection tool is ideal for working with the frame as a whole, whether it's a text frame, graphic frame, or an assigned frame. So what about the content inside frames? So in this document, you can see we have text frames, graphic frames, and unassigned frames. With the selection tool active, we can click frames. But if, for example, we click on a frame with type, if we double click on the frame, we can enter into that frame and select the content. This is useful for clicking into frames with text to edit. With content selected inside a frame, if you want to deselect the content inside, simply press escape to go back to the frame selection. And the same applies to images. With the selection tool active, if we click on a frame with an image, if we double click into the frame, we will then see the bounding box of the image inside, which we can then click to move around and change the size inside or even rotate. This is one way to edit content in the frames. Another is to use the direct selection tool, the white arrow. Now this lets you select and manipulate the contents of a frame directly. So instead of having to click once and then double click into the frame with your selection tool, with the direct selection tool, you can just click inside it once. By understanding and utilizing these selection tools, you can gain precise control over both the frame and its contents, enabling you to create professional, polished designs with ease. So as I click through this document, you may notice that some of the frames have different colors. When you have frames in your document, they will be colored, and this will represent which layer in which they reside. For example, here on page two and three, the text frames are green, and that is because they are on the type layer in the layers panel, which we can see is labeled green. And if I click on the image frames, we can see these are red, matching the image layer in the layers panel. So in InDesign, the frames can also let you know which layer they are set. This can help you keep everything on the layers you want and keep on top of your layer structure and organization. Also, on a lot of the frames, you will see some rounded corners. On page one and two of my document, you can see that some of my frames have corners and some don't. InDesign allows for a lot of flexibility, offering a range of corner options. So let's jump back into the worksheet and have a look at how we can start to work with frames. Now, if we again press W on the keyboard, we can toggle between preview and normal mode. In normal mode, we can see all the frames that are making up this worksheet, where we have lots of text, graphic, and unassigned frames. So let's come to the bottom spread in the worksheet. So to create the frame is simple. To do this, we can select the desired frame tool from the tools panel, where if we click and hold on the frame tool, we can select from the rectangle frame tool, the ellipse frame tool, or polygon frame tool. I'll click on the rectangle tool, come into the work area and click and drag. Upon release, we will create an unassigned frame. Remember, unassigned frames are simple frames with no text or links inside them. Another thing you can keep in mind, instead of clicking and dragging to draw a custom frame, with the frame tool active, if you click once, up will pop a menu where you can add in exact values. I'll type in 25 for width and height, click OK, and there is a frame to my exact measurements. So that is how simple it can be to create a frame. And we can do this again with the ellipse or polygon tool. Now a really cool thing to keep in mind in InDesign is convert shape. So right now we have a square and a circle frame, but what if we wanted a triangle frame? With our frame selected, we can come up to object, scroll down to convert shape, and from here we will have a selection. If I click on triangle, we will convert the frame into a triangle shape. If I click the square, we can convert this to an ellipse. So if you have a frame and you want to replace it with a different shape, instead of having to draw a new frame, you can just convert shape, easy. So as well as changing the shape of a frame, we can also edit the shape manually. If I press A to activate the direct selection tool and click on the triangle, we will see anchor points are now white. This means I can now click and drag on these anchor points to edit and move them around to edit the frame. If, for example, I come back up to object, convert shape, and turn it into a rectangle, I can click off and then click back on again and edit the corner points. That is how easy it can be to make simple changes to your frames. But it doesn't end there. We can make further edits to a frame by using the pen tool. 
With the frame active, if we come over to the tools menu, click and hold on the pen tool and select the plus icon, we can click and add additional anchor points to our frame outline. And if we press A to activate the direct selection tool, we can click on these points and drag them around. This can be great if you want to make custom shapes. So another thing to keep in mind when working with frames is the corner options. So I'll quickly draw out another frame below. And with the frame selected, you can come up to object and if we click on corner options, up will pop a menu where you can customize your corners. From here, you can select a range of corner styles from the drop down. By unchecking the lock icon, you can add corner options to individual corners. So in this instance, I'll set the top right corner to rounded with a value of 10. Also make sure to click the preview box so you can see your edits in real time. And for the bottom left corner, I'll also set the round corner to a value of 10 and click OK. So I'll press Command Z on Mac or Control Z on PC to undo that. Another feature to be aware of is this little yellow box on the frame. When you select a frame with the selection tool, you will see a yellow box. Click this once and you will see four yellow boxes around the frame. Simply drag in the box and you can add a round corner. Click and hold shift and drag and you can add round corners to just that one corner. So I'll duplicate my shape across by clicking and dragging while holding Alt. Come up to corner options, click the lock icon, select inverse round corners and set this to 10 and click OK. And that's how easy it is to customize your frame corners. Now here is a trick to make a grid of multiple frames. So first I'm going to come up to layout and click on margins and columns. In the menu, I'll be sure to hit five for gutter and click OK and you'll see why this is important in a second. Now, if we click and hold the frame tool, we can select the rectangle tool. This time, as I click and drag to make a frame, if I press right on the keyboard, we will see more frames snap out. The more we press right, the more frames will occur. And if we want to dial that back in, we can press left. Also, if I press up, more frames will appear in rows. So just like that, we can click and drag, press left and up to create a grid of boxes like so. So I'll press left and up to get four columns and four rows. Upon release, we will now have a grid of unassigned frames, which we can also click individually and move around if we want. Now, some of you may be wondering, what is causing this gap in between all of these squares? Now, if you remember just a second ago, I came up to layout margins and columns and set this to five. It's the gutter space for the margins and columns that determines the space here. So with the selection tool, I'll select all these frames and just delete them. I'll come back up to layout and click on margins and columns. This time for gutter, I'll type in zero. And with the selection tool, I'll click and drag to make a frame. I'll press right on the keyboard and up on the keyboard. And this time we'll make another grid of squares, but this time with no gap between at all. So keep in mind, if you want to create a grid of frames, pay attention to the margin and column settings to define the space between. So another powerful feature to save you time is distribute. Now check this out. So with the selection tool, I'll select over all the frames I just created and click and drag on the bottom right anchor point to pull them in to make them smaller. This time I'll click and drag back again, but this time while pressing and holding spacebar. Upon release, we will see all the frames spread out and distribute space between them all. Again, we can click and drag in the frames as a whole to change the size, then click and drag out again while holding the spacebar to distribute the space between them. This is a really handy feature to manage multiple frames and manage the space between them. So while we're on the topic of managing space between the frames, this naturally brings us to the gap tool. If we come up and click on the gap tool and move our mouse cursor down between the shapes, you will see in design prompt either the height or width of the gap. With the gap tool, you can do a number of things here. The first thing we can do is just simply click and drag left or right or up or down, which will change the actual space between the frames, which will affect the size of the left or right or top or bottom frame. The next thing you can do is hold down the Alt key. As you click and drag, you will be able to change the gap to the left and the right or top and bottom. Another one you can do is hold down Command on Mac or Control on PC. And as you drag in, you can reduce or extend the space between the frames. Here, you can reduce the size of the frames by zero by dragging in. So a really powerful tool there to help you save time. Now, another method to create multiple frames is to duplicate. With the frame selected, we can either copy and paste or I'll drag a new frame over to the next page in the worksheet. Or with the frame selected, press and hold Alt and click and drag on a frame. This is a really fast way to duplicate a frame and its contents. So I'll duplicate my frame on the left until I have four randomly placed frames here on my worksheet page. And this leads to another one of the most useful features when working with frames, and this is aligning frames. 
In Adobe InDesign, aligning frames is crucial for creating clean, organized, and professional layouts. With the selection tool, I'll just click on a bunch of the new frames to scatter them out randomly. Now we can either click and drag over them all to select multiple, or simply click while holding shift to select multiple. Then we can open the align panel or come up to the control panel. The align options offer various alignment options such as align frames to the left, center, right, top, middle, or bottom. So here I'll simply click to align vertical center and then click to distribute horizontal center. And here we can align and distribute our frames quite precisely. If I move one of the frames up, then select them all and quickly press align top edge, the rest of the frames will follow. Now, as well as creating frames using the frame tool, you can also create custom shaped frames using the pen tool by drawing the desired shape and closing the path. So if we come up, click and hold on the pen tool, come into the work area, click on the canvas to create anchor points. We can click around until we get to the end point to close the path. And if we want, we can edit the shape easily. If we click and hold on the pen tool to select the add anchor point tool, we can click back on the shape outline to add a new anchor point. Then press escape to deselect, select the direct selection tool. And if we click on the line, we can see the anchor points turning to white squares, which we can click and drag to manipulate the outline. This custom shape can now function as a frame where you can place text, images, or other content inside. Easy. So another method to create custom shape frames is to paste vectors directly into InDesign. If we come back up to the top of the worksheet, here for sample two, we can see a shape. With the selection tool, I'll select the thumbnail for the sample two doc, and I'll either come to the links panel and click edit original, or I'll hold alt on the keyboard and double click on the worksheet thumbnail, and the document will open in Illustrator. If you have a vector image or shape that you may have composed in Illustrator, we can simply select the vector image, come back into InDesign and paste, and InDesign will recognize the vector points and formats. So I'll place this down here on the worksheet, in this instance, I'll set the stroke to transparent. In the tools menu, we can see the outline. This can now act like a frame where we could place text, color, or a link. Now, another method to create custom shapes is the ability to join frames together. In InDesign, we have the Pathfinder tool, which is a powerful feature that allows you to combine multiple frames into complex shapes, enhancing your design capabilities. To join frames together, select the frame you want to merge using the selection tool. For example, let's take a circle, a square, and the vector shape. Here you can position them together and overlap them in parts. Then navigate to the Pathfinder panel. If you cannot see yours, come up to Window, into Object and Layout, and select Pathfinder. Here you'll find various options to combine, intersect, exclude, and subtract shapes. With all the frames selected, by clicking the Add button, you can merge the selected frames into a single unified frame, effectively combining them together. This is good if you want to place an image inside a frame that has a unique container. So the last thing to know is the ability to create a frame from type. Here at the bottom of the worksheet, I have a word in the text frame. And if I double click into the frame, we can see we can edit the texture. Now, if I press escape to deselect the text, with the text frame selected, come up to type, come down and click on create outline, and the text will be converted essentially into vector shapes. And with the direct selection tool, we can see the anchor points. This can now work like a frame where we can change the color or even place an image inside. So there you have it, frames in InDesign. Who would have thought that something as simple as frames would require so much insight? Well, that's the power of InDesign and that's the level of detail and customizability you can go to in InDesign. So now we are all clued up on how to use frames. It's now time to move on to the next step. See you in the next video.